What's going on, Chaotix? It is your boy Chaos Made Level Six here, and we're back with week three of Pokemon, well, Fletchling Tube Pokemon Elite Season Two. I'm ready to go against my very fun opponent, Super Mew, and the Mew York Met. And we're gonna see what my team is gonna look up for this match. It'll be coming up very, very shortly in an hour. So make sure you do stick around for that. But we're gonna look. Firstly, at my team, and here we go. We're starting off with the Iron Giant Aggron. Now, this is a regular-looking Aggron, but it is holding Aggronite, so I promise you that it's going to have the filter ability once it Mega Evolves, but it's going to have Sturdy just because. And this is probably my lead, probably a really good lead. Aggron's going to be sitting here primarily as my Rocker and a Phaser as well, so that's why I have Stealth Rock and Roar. If something comes in that I can take out with Heavy Slam or Stone Edge, it probably will do so. Like that, so Giant's gonna be real fun. It's a nice phasing mon. Trying to set up, see what his team is like. It's gonna be good to see what he's coming, what he's bringing with, and because I've never played Mew before, so it's gonna be it's gonna be fun to do this match. Heavy Slam, Stone Edge, Stealth Rock and Roar moves, and for stats, it's gonna be running max HP, max special defense, just a little bit in the defensive bulk. I made it very, very defensive this week. It does suggest that I do a bulky physical sweeper needed the defense so I'm keeping the defense on it making it very defensive and I'm ready for this match careful nature boosting that special defense in favor of special attack and we'll move on to our second member which is a Fox McCloud the Tornadus holding Poisonium Z this week it is my Z user and I'm gonna give it Defiant just because Prankster's not gonna really help me out in this situation too much it's, we're running more of a lane back set this week. It's not going to be an all out attacking thing or by any means. So we're running Sludge Wave, Hurricane, Rest, and Sleep Talk. Now, Sludge Wave comes in for nice calcs, and I didn't go over Akron's usage. Let me do Akron's usage real quick. Akron's going to be good for Tapu Lele, Sylveon, and Talonflame. It's going to take those flame. It's going to actually do more damage with Brave Bird than it will with Flame Tra with um, Flare Blitz. So. Yeah, we're, we're ready for that talent flame. We can hit with a stone edge, so we can easily level one, take it out. Lele and Sylveon both going down to the heavy slam. It also does really good against other mons, too, being very defensive. Fox McCloud running Poison MZ, Defiant, just as I said. Sludge Wave this week is run because, fun fact, with the rocks, which is what I'm expecting to use in this game, I'm very reliant on rocks this week. If I have rocks, Sludge Wave guarantees me an Oko on Tapu Lele. I really like that. So I'm putting it there. We also have Poisonium Z just because I can nuke something with Acid Downfall or whatever it's called. And that's going to be really powerful on Sylveon if it comes. So it's a really good nuke to have in the back. Also does damage to every single member of his team, unlike Hurricane. Well, I guess Poisonium Z would do damage against the rest of his team too. I just like Poison EMZ better just because of that Sylveon sitting back there. We're also running Hurricane, Rest, and Sleep Talk. We're running the Rest Talk Slip. Rest Sleep Talk set this week. Just because I think it's going to be really nice to have a way to heal myself up. Yes, I'm going to have to wait two turns, but I do have Sleep Talk on this thing so I can keep hitting Sludge Waves and Hurricanes, hopefully, and not get Rest. Because if I this thing is just going to be able to take everything out, if it can, it's running max special attack, max speed, just so we can outspeed the Tapu Lele. I don't have to worry about it trying to fire off like Psy Shock or Moon Blast on me, so I can live a hit. I don't have to worry about living attack and just take it out. And then just a little bit of HP bulk to sustain some hits, giving me a nice 300 in my base HP. Then we're bringing Doomsday. I'm bringing it shiny this week because I, I feel like bringing it shiny, holding that black sludge to get some HP back, and the sniper ability to boost the critical hits power by 1.5, which is going to be really, really nice. I think it boosted by 1.5. Yes, multiply by 1.5. That's great. Uh, run a knockoff, poison jab, pursuit of protect, knockoff, obviously to get rid of the opponent's item. Poison jab is going to be good for those tapu, for tapu lele and uh, shaman. And Sylveon also. Um, but we're already knockoff this week because it's a really great move. I expect everything to come with an item on this team. Most competitive users 
use items on their team, so knockoff's gonna be really nice to hit some nice power there. But if we do have stealth rocks up and we do have pursuit, I can pursuit trap the Mew into the battle and completely wall it pretty much and also do over half damage on, on the switch out so it's gonna be really nice to see that with Doomsday so I just gotta get some nice prediction for Pursuit I also have Protect there just in case I wanna live a couple hits now the attack stat is 120 positive we didn't really need a huge attack stat it's gonna do its job and everything I'm planning for it to use it on so Mew, Gengar, Lele it one shots Gengar with knockoff so that's what I'm looking for that's why it's 120 I didn't need more than that I wanted to run more in the speed stat to give it a little bit of outspeeding on some certain things and then special defense so we can live some hits that we're gonna have to live on other things like we're not gonna outspeed Gengar and we're not gonna outspeed some of the things in this team but the rest of the team there's a few things that outspeed us but we outspeed the rest of the team pretty much and things we don't outspeed like Gengar and stuff can hit us really hard with a move we got some special defensive bulk that's gonna make us have a nice hit and be able to fire back really quick so oh adamant nature by the way and now we got El Aguila or the Eagle has landed in this match I'm finally bringing Halucha I'm really excited to bring it and I'm actually bringing it how I didn't I never expected to bring Halucha as like a standalone mom but here we are bringing power herb Unburden this week, which is a lot of fun for me, and obviously Sky Attack's gonna be taking the effect of that power herb. Hitting really hard and it's gonna nuke a lot of different things. Also running high jump kick, swords dance, and acrobatic. Swords dance is there for a really bad switch in that is already with my boost. So Halucha can easily set up and sweep this team and it's gonna be really nice because Unburden gives me two times the speed. I'm not running any speed investment. But if you look at it, I'm running about 540 speed, give or take. It's about 544, I think. So something like that. Speed outspeeds everything on this team. Outspeeds the Mega Sceptile, which is his fastest thing. Running about 247. To running about 427, sorry. And we can one-shot it with acrobatics if we get a boost. Sky Attack's going to hit everything really hard. High jump kick. Now, Sky Attack is really there just to get the unburdened boost, but it does have some usefulness as a nuke. If I know Alaguela is going to go down, I don't want to switch it out because I have the boost. I can Sky Attack, which might be a bad thing if it can set up. I got to watch that really bad. But it could just hit something really hard before it dies, which is going to be really nice, especially with the speed stat. Um, it also works really well against Choice Scarf and Ditto, which is why I'm bringing it. Because if I get the right prediction here, if I get the right prediction, no matter what, Ditto, no matter how Ditto comes in, if I get rid of my, if I can, if I'm unburdened boosted, if I'm unburdened speed boosted, no matter how high his speed stat is, I outspeed, which means I can acrobatics to take him out, which is gonna be really, really nice. And also, Halucha doesn't really do too much damage. Unless it's two, t unless it's plus two, but if I predict, but my hope is I send in Alaguila. He brings in Ditto at some point, and then hopefully I'm either boosted by then, I'm either speed boosted by then, or I have the attack boost, so I can just sky attack. On a, I can predict a, a switch in, hit the sky attack, take it out. I can, if I'm speed boosted, I can acrobatics to take it out. Or sky attack either way. Sky attack is actually probably my best bet, regardless of how this thing comes in. But if I do have the speed boost, I want to hit acrobatics just so he doesn't have a chance to switch out into something else, or set up his own sword stance. Because, uh, well, I'll, I'll take him out, but still. So this is really good for Ditto. Also going to be my main counter for Ditto. Good against Snorlax, Regirock, and Shaman as well, obviously, because that nice flying fighting stab. Boosted and for stats, I'm giving no speed investment because it's fast enough with the unburden, so I'm not worried about that. Even if I do come in unbur without unburden, I'm running 272, which is not bad of a speed stat. So I should be able to take out most things that I'm going to be fighting against anyway. The speed boost just gives me that opportunity to take out the ditto, and that's what I'm really playing for. And we're running max attack match HP. Now, the HP really doesn't matter too much, it's just to give me some bulk. I'm gonna die to most things anyway, but the attack is really important, which is why.
why I'm not running a serious nature. Glad I caught that out, which is why I'm running an Adam nature. When I'm running adamant, so I can boost that attack and get some nice power going. And that HP is just there to give me some bulk on the back end. Thanks for bringing in a boy, Richter, the Seismic Toad, holding leftovers and water absorb. Water absorb is there purely for Vicorion, just in case it tries to scald me in the face. I can get my HP back, which is going to be really nice. I decided to bring a substitute set this week, just because I thought it'd be really fun to use. And, I mean, we do have leftovers, so we're going to be healing ourselves every turn. Running the typical Scald Earth Power, just get some stabs. Scald's going to be nice to burn things. And we do have Earth Power just in case some other things come in, like Red Rock's going to be really nice for, and Gengar. So it gives me the ability to stick those out. And then Toxic for the one-on-one -on -one battle with Vaporeon, which I know it's going to happen. It's got I know it's going to have Wish. It's probably going to have Toxic, Scald, and pick your fourth move, probably Protect in there. So if you can Toxic it, get it damaged every single turn, it's going to be great. And then I can Substitute up. Well, hopefully I can substitute up before it gets me toxic, so it's going to be really nice. That way, if not, I do have another backup plan for that, but let's look at the HP. I mean the stats. With HP at 4, just giving me a little bit of bulk in that HP stack. We're running special attack of Toad this week, so 252 in a special attack, and 252 with a bold nature in defense. And this thing is primarily going to be a stall for Vaporeon, a defensive wall as well. Gives me a, a bulky special attacker as well so I can take some nice shots and go through and good for Vaporeon Shuckle, Talonflame, Red Rock, and Gengar on his team and the last member of the team which I have not named yet you'll see the name in the battle I, I'll work on it I just haven't figured out what I want to name it yet because I haven't ever used the Florges but it's the Florges and it's got leftovers as well you're allowed two of the same items so I'm using my leftovers on Richter and leftovers on Florges and then Flower Veil just because I needed an ability because Ba these abilities are bad. It's size grass types can't have the stats lower, and if an ally uses, yeah, that it's not gonna help me out. Run defog. This is gonna be defogger, and the reason I'm running defog is because my team does not want to face shuckle at all. Really, we're not built to take on shuckle too well, and if it gets sticky webs up or rocks up, not gonna be fun for me. So defog is here to take on that. And also we got some nice bulk in our HP with 252, defense 252 plus with bold nature, lowering that attack in favor of defense, and a little bit of that special attacking just so I can hit Moonblast pretty nicely. You have aromatherapy and wish in case I do get like some status on me, like the toxic as I was talking about with Richter and the Vaporeon. I have aromatherapy to cleric myself up, heal myself up, and then wish if I want to wish pass into something. I don't have baton pass, but I can like hard switch out so that'll work there but that is the team guys i hope you guys did enjoy this team builder if you're excited for week two well week three of the flesh and tube pokemon league season two make sure you do leave a like and make sure you do stick around because in just an hour the battle goes live so you want to you really want to see that that is the team and i thank you very much for watching hope you guys did enjoy make sure you do leave a like and subscribe stay up to date on this channel and on the Fletch and Tube Pokemon League Season 2 as well as future seasons and I will see you guys in the battle or in the next video so until then I'm KSMate006 signing off Bird it up